hope you did get a good night's sleep. Um, I didn't get quite enough. You might be feeling the same way and, and you got to bed a little bit late. And then about 5.30 this morning, I, a flock of crows uh, seemed to come to my window and serenade me. Um, if, if you've ever been woken up that way, it's not, it's not the most kind way to be woken up. Uh, but I'm glad we're here this morning. I do want to say, uh, ladies, amazing job with the chalk art. That was awesome. And... Uh, yeah, and uh, I did catch the, uh, the one there with some of the uh, points from the chapel messages. And the, the great thing is, I even saw tomorrow's uh, theme. So, so somebody must be thinking ahead, which is great. Um, before we get into the message this morning, uh, I do need to confirm a rumor that's been going around. Okay, and we need to deal with this rumor. Um, Sunday night, when we did our introductions, and we all said where we were from, uh, I don't think all of you were being 100% honest, all right? Um, I have to confirm this morning that what you suspect is true. There are aliens among us, all right? Now, listen, I know what you're thinking, okay? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but it's not what you're thinking, all right? Garrett, it's not, it's not what you're thinking. It's actually, it's true. Um, <laughs> Mark's not from here. Um, this morning, we're going to continue to talk about our identity. And uh, Mark, I'll, I'll take off your uh, picture there for a minute so you can avoid further embarrassment. I did get both of their permission, so they knew this was coming. We're, we're talking about our identity in Christ and becoming who we are in Christ. And today, we're going to look at this concept of what it means to be an alien. Now, a lot of times when we hear the word alien, what is the first thing that we think about? UFOs, all right. This idea that there's some life out there, people come and visit us. From now on, you're going to think about Mark, all right. Um, but an alien, the, the definition of alien, um, <laughs> that worked out really well. Um, <laughs> there you have it. The definition of an alien is a foreigner, especially one who is not a naturalized citizen of a country where they are living. So, so you know, bringing our thoughts back from sort of the extraterrestrial things, we, we realize an alien is someone who lives in a land that they are not of or from. All right, an alien is someone who lives in a land that they are not of or from. They are not a citizen of that place, all right? And so we think about, we have aliens who live here, right? Legal ones, illegal ones, right? But they are people who are not of here. They're not from here. They're not citizens of here, but they live here. And so we're familiar with that, that concept. And this morning as we think about that, thinking about the fact that through the gospel, right, we have this invitation to become someone that we never were, right? We have this amazing invitation from God through the gospel to become someone that we never were. And so this morning, I want us to think about how the gospel invites us to see ourselves as aliens, all right? All right, you know, we've talked about seeing ourselves as children, as a priest, as a bride, but now I want you to see yourself and to think of yourself as an alien, all right? Now stick with me, all right? Because it's a really, really important, important way that we're to see ourselves. We, through Christ, have been redeemed, right? We have been purchased by the blood of Christ. We've been rescued from our rebellion. All of us, by nature, are rebellious in our hearts. We all have rebellion towards God by nature, right? But Jesus Christ came, right, to rescue us and to redeem us, to purchase us, even though we were rebellious, even though we were unworthy, even though we did not love him until he first loved us. Jesus Christ came and he rescued us and he made us to be his children. Like every one of you who are in Christ to know Jesus as your Savior, you are a child of God. You are a priest to your God with Jesus Christ serving as your high priest, your advocate before the Father. You're his bride, you're pure and you're holy because of what Jesus has done for you. And this morning, I want you to discover your identity now as an alien. And understanding yourself as an alien will help understand your role and your purpose in this world. So thinking about that and thinking about the fact that God has an amazing plan for each of our lives, I want to begin in Philippians chapter 3. So if you have your Bible this morning, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to begin in verse 16. Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. Paul, writing to the church, says this. He says, Only let us live up to what we have already attained. 
So Paul says, only let us live up to what we have already obtained. It's Paul's way of saying, become who you are. Work out what God has worked in you through the gospel. So Paul, writing to the church, he says, let us live up. Let us live out what Christ has already done in us. And that's why it's so important to understand who you are. Because when you understand who you are in Christ, who Jesus has saved you and made you to be, it will position you to do exactly what Paul is challenging us to do, which is to work out, to live out that which Christ has already worked in us. It's not through self-effort, it's not through trying harder, it's not through religious works, but it's allowing what Jesus is doing and has done in us to be lived out in and through our lives. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Earlier, In the book of Philippians, in chapter 2, Paul said this. He said, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed and now in my presence, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. God saved you. He redeemed you. He called you his bride, his priest, his child. And then he calls us to live that out. And one of the things that we have to realize as we live out what God is working in us is that we are not citizens of this world anymore. That when Jesus Christ saves you, he gives you a new citizenship. You have a new identity in Christ and part of that is that you now are not from here anymore. That your citizenship is in heaven. That you become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And that's really, really important to understand. You and I, if we are in Christ, if you know Jesus as your Savior, your citizenship is in the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of heaven. And as such, that makes us aliens here. And God wants you to understand that in your time here, you were to see yourself as a citizen of his kingdom and an alien here. To live in this world, but not of this world. Let's go back to Philippians chapter 3 and work through a little bit more of what, what Paul shares there. He says in verse 17, Join with others in following my example, brothers. And take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of the Christ. And so in Paul's day, just as in ours, culture lived as enemies of the gospel. They lived in hostility towards the gospel, towards this message that Jesus was the Messiah, the Redeemer. And And so, as Paul's writing to the church, he says he's writing, and even with tears, understanding that there are those who live as enemies of the cross, those who reject the message of the gospel, that they need salvation. And so he says, in this world, he says, follow my example, take note of how I live in this pattern. How do we live in a world that's hostile to the gospel? How do we live in a world that mocks our faith? How do we live out what God has worked in us in a hostile world? Well, we realize that we are not of this world. We are not citizens of this world anymore. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Look at what Paul says about those who live as enemies of the gospel. He says, their destiny is destruction. Their their end is ruin. And that's why Paul wrote with tears. Right? That's why he says, it brings me to tears because these who proclaim to be my enemies, really they're just lost. Right? And Paul's talking about the very people who persecuted him. Right? Paul's writing this from jail. He's writing this from a Roman prison. Right? There for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Paul says, there are people who are enemies of the cross of Christ, but I don't hate them. Right? I'm broken for them because they're lost and their end, their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their God is their appetite. Their God is their desires. He says they're living for themselves. They're living to satisfy the lusts of their flesh. They glory in their sin. And listen, we see that today, don't we? That's how culture lives. Their God is their appetite. But through the gospel, you and I are called to live differently. We're called to live for something greater than just fulfilling our desires. We're to be in this world, but not of this world. Paul says their thinking, their belief, look at verse 19, their mind is on earthly things. They're consumed with living for here and now. He says they're living to grab and to get, to experience, to have, 
all the things and the stuff of this life and of this world. And Paul writing to the church is, yes, that's how culture lives. That's how those who do not know the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's how they live. But we who know Christ have been called to live differently through Christ, through the gospel. You and I are invited to a different kind of life. We are not to live that way. Not to live as citizens of this world, but as citizens of the kingdom of God. John said it like this, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. He says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Do not love the world. He says, don't be so in love with the here and now, with the things of this life, with the pleasures of this life. He says, that's not what you are called to live for as a citizen of the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that we cannot enjoy life, right? God has placed things in this life for us to enjoy. He's given us the capacity to know and experience pleasure. All right, God is not against that. But what he's saying is don't live for that. Don't live for yourself. Don't live for the satisfaction of earthly things. He says, don't love the world or anything of the world. Have a lesser love for the world and have a greater love for God. He says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That you haven't experienced, you haven't really gotten the incredible love of God that's consumed and filled your life. We are called not to live as citizens of this world, but as citizens of the kingdom of God. Paul says it. He says, our citizenship, our residency is in heaven as we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Right, Paul writing to the church who knowing they're going to experience persecution, knowing they're experiencing trials and difficulties, knowing that the world that they lived in was hostile to the gospel of Jesus Christ, says you need to remember where your citizenship lies. Right, in his world, in his day, being a Roman citizen was a really big deal because being a Roman citizen gave you rights and privileges that others did not have. And Paul, writing them, says the, the most important citizenship that you can have, the most important way to, to see yourself and to see your identity, he says don't, don't see yourself as a citizen of this world, but see yourself as a citizen of heaven. And he says, remember, that's who you are. That's where you live. He says, and we eagerly await our Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power that, listen, enables him to bring everything under his control, God will bring this world to his conclusion. All right, in a world that often seems out of control, in a world that's certainly under the influence now of the evil one of Satan, God has a plan. God is on the throne. Jesus Christ is coming again one day to take his rightful place on the throne of this world. And so he invites us now to see ourselves as citizens of that reality, of that kingdom. And so he says, understanding that, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies, that they will be like his glorious body. Right? One day, as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have a new body, a perfect body. Right? One that does not get hurt. One that does not soar. One that does not experience pain. One that does not experience sorrow. That's your destiny. That's your reality. And God wants you to understand that and live that out now. To live your life, your time here as an alien. Not seeing yourself primarily as a citizen of this world, but as a citizen of the kingdom of God. To view your life as an alien. And I want us just to think about how do we do that practically? How do we live our lives out as aliens in this world? Just two things I want to share. Number one, see yourself as God sees you. That's what we've been talking about all week. See yourself the way God sees you. Believe what he says about you. If you're going to live out your time here on this earth as an alien, you need to see yourself as God sees you. You need to believe what God says about you. I love what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 about us. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Isn't that an amazing promise? It says, if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. We're not who we used to be, right? We're not the same old person. We're not just a citizen of this world. We're not just a sinner. We're not all those things that we can label ourselves with or define ourselves by. We now are a new creation in Christ. He's rescued us and redeemed us. He's called us by name. He knows us, right? Satan, Satan knows your name. 
But he calls you by your sin. He accuses you. Jesus knows all of your sin. But he calls you by name. And he calls you his child, his priest, his bride. And as such, he calls you to live as an alien in this world. He calls you to see your life the way God sees it. Listen, you are a new creation in Christ. Believe that. You are not who you were. Right? You are not who you were apart from Christ. Your old identity, listen, we still struggle with sin. We still struggle with our old nature, but that's not our identity anymore. You are not what you have done. You're not an accumulation of your mistakes, your failures, your shortcomings. Listen, Satan will love to make you think that. He will love to convince you that because you've failed, because you've struggled, because you have fallen in some way, that now somehow you are less worthy, that you're less worthy of God's love. Here's the thing. You were never worthy of God's love. Right? You never earned it. You never deserved it. He chooses to lavish his love on us. He chooses to do that, not because we're worthy, not because there was anything lovely in us or good in us or desirable in us. God simply chooses to lavish his incredible, wonderful love on us. You're not what you've done. You're not what others say you are. People will say all kinds of things about you. They'll put labels on you. They'll describe you. You know what happens even though we know we shouldn't? What happens sometimes? We start to what? We start to believe them, don't we? We start to believe what other people say about us. But I want you not to believe what other people say about you unless they're saying what God says about you. I want to challenge you to believe God over others. Believe what God says about you. He says you are righteous and holy. You are pure, not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done for you. And listen, you're not what others have done to you. You may have been hurt. You may have been treated wrongly. You may have been put down. You may have been hurt deeply by someone. But that's not who you are. That does not need to define you. You and I need to be defined by what Christ has done for us. That's what defines me. Not what others have done to me. Not what others have said to me. But what Jesus has done for me. He died for me. He died for you. That's what defines us. He went to the cross willingly for you. He gave up his life. The Father turned his back on the Son. He forsook his son. He abandoned his son for you. Right? I'm sure I told you this last year. I love you. I care about you. I would do anything to help any one of you. And I would willingly give my life to save yours. I can honestly say that. But I would not give up my son for any one of you. Just wouldn't do it. Or my daughter, in case you're wondering. I wouldn't do it. I just couldn't make, I just, I mean, I'm like, I love you, but I'm sorry. Right? Just being honest, just being real. But God chose to give up his son for you. God chose to abandon his son. When his son was on the cross and he cried out, he screamed out, God, why have you forsaken me? He couldn't even call him father. Why have you abandoned me? So that he would never, ever have to abandon us. That's what defines you. You are a new creation in Christ. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. And I challenge you, I urge you, I plead with you this morning, believe that. Believe what God says about you because it will position you then to live as an alien in this world. When you understand that the world is hostile and the world is difficult and living as God's alien, living as a citizen of the kingdom of God while you still live here on the earth, it's hard, isn't it? Right? Because the world pulls us. The world attracts us. Right? Sin is tempting. Right? We face all of those things. But God says, see who you are and it will change the way that you live. Number two, if we're going to be the aliens that God's called us to be, right? We need to live as his ambassador in this world. All right? As God's aliens, his purpose for us is to represent his kingdom in this world. God has saved you to be his ambassador, to be his kingdom representative. And so this is a great privilege that we have in Christ. An ambassador is someone who is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. And so as such, listen, you are God's official representatives to this world. All right, I don't know why God chose to do it that way. 
Are you with me? All right, when I look at myself, I often think, God, you, you could have come up with a better plan. But his plan, his choice is to use you and me to represent him to this world, to be his ambassador. Look at 2 Corinthians again. We looked at verse 17, but let's keep reading in that chapter. Because we're here to represent the kingdom of God. An ambassador is not only an accredited diplomat, but they are a person who acts as a representative or a promoter of a specific activity. So we are representatives of God and we're representatives of the gospel. So read with me. It says, all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against them as he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So there he says, it. he says, we are God's ambassadors. We are God's representatives. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We are aliens here. We are strangers on this earth. This world is not ultimately our home, but we are to live here in this world. We are not to be of the world, but God calls us to live in the world. To be his ambassador, to be his representative of this message of reconciliation. This message that all of humanity is at odds with God. All of humanity is in rebellion to God. But there's an answer. There's a solution to our rebellion and our searching. That solution is Christ who became our righteousness. And we have this ministry of reconciliation to pronounce and to proclaim that there's a way to be reconciled to God. And that's through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 21 sums it up so well. God made him who had no sin to be sin. Jesus Christ became our sin. He took on our sin and God poured out his wrath on Jesus so that in him, through Christ, we could become the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God through Christ. That's who you are. And we are ambassadors now of this message. We are to take this glorious message to the world. And so if you're a follower of Christ... Know that you are an alien in this world. You need to see yourself that way. You need to see, say, you know what, when I face the ridicule that the world brings, when I face the temptations that the world brings, when I live in this world and all these things that could distract me, I need to remember who I am. I'm a child of God. I am a priest to my God. I am the bride of Christ, pure and holy, and I am an alien. This world isn't my home. And as an alien, I'm an ambassador of this message of the gospel, this reconciliation that God offers. You should not feel completely at home in this world. There should always be that bit of dissatisfaction as it realizes I'm not ultimately where I'm supposed to be yet. My citizenship is with God in his kingdom, in his presence. But right now, he's not called me to be in his presence yet. He's called me to be his ambassador, to live as his official representative. To take this message of the gospel, this message of reconciliation to your world. Listen, there is a world that desperately needs to hear the gospel. And you and I have been called to be his ambassadors of that message wherever we go. And it may be that God might call one of you to be his ambassador in a foreign country, in a foreign land. There are still thousands of people groups who have never heard the name of Jesus. And they live in darkness. They live without the light of their creator who died for them and who rose for again, who longs to liberate them from their sin. Maybe you will be one that God uses to be his ambassador, to take this glorious message of the gospel to the ends of the earth, to be obedient to the call, to take the gospel to every people group, right? Every nation, literally the word in the Greek, every ethnic group. God desires that every ethnicity, every people group in this world would know him and glorify him and praise him. It may be that God will call you to ministry here like he did when I was a camper here. Maybe he'll call you to vocational ministry. It, it may be that God will call you to be an educator. That God will call you to be a teacher. To be his ambassador in a school. It, it may be that God will call you to music performance. That that will be the calling that God puts on your life. And you will be his ambassador in a world that desperately needs to know Christ. Listen, the important thing is not where you are an ambassador, but that you are an ambassador. That you realize that your life mission ultimately is to represent the kingdom of God 
where you are. And listen, that's not just a future thing. That's here and now. When you go home, you're to be an ambassador for Christ. In your home, in your school, wherever you go, represent his kingdom. Live out what he has called you to. You are an alien on a mission. All right? You can smile. It's kind of funny. But think about your... You are... I'm in... So just, just, just right now, turn to somebody next to you, if you really believe this, and just tell them that. Just say, I'm an alien on a mission. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good to get that out in the open? All right? It's, it's easy. You are an alien on a mission. I close with this. Peter writing to the church. So, dear brothers and sisters, you are foreigners and aliens here. So I warn you, keep away from evil desires because they fight against your very souls. He says, be, be careful of sin because it's not something to play with because it will not just be disobedience, but it will destroy you. He says, be careful how you live. Be wise how you live among your unbelieving neighbors. Live out the gospel. Live out what Christ has worked in you. Even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior. And they will believe and give honor to God when he comes to judge the world. You are an alien. You're an ambassador. Take on your mission. Would you bow your heads this morning? Just to be still before God for a moment. And how many of you just, just be honest before God this morning and, and just say, God really has gripped my heart with this and I maybe haven't always really taken on that role. Maybe I didn't even understand that role, but I really do want to be and live my life as an alien, as an ambassador. Would you raise your hand so I could pray for you? Just acknowledge that before God. God sees your hand. He sees your heart. Just say, I want that. Thank you so much. Let me pray for all of us. Father, I thank you for the opportunity we've had this morning, Father, to open your word, which is living and powerful and true. And Father, I thank you that it has the power to speak into our hearts and to our lives. And I thank you that you've called us to be your aliens, to be your ambassadors. Father, I thank you for everyone who acknowledged this morning that that's what I desire and that's what I want. And Father, I know that, that we struggle sometimes to understand our role. We struggle to live it out. But I pray through the power of your spirit, not through our self-effort, Lord, that we would take on this role, that we would believe what you say about us, and then we would live it out. Use us as your ambassadors to take this glorious message of the gospel to this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.